I think that design matters in the field I'm in not enough. Um, and I'm talking specifically creature design. It's one of those things where you kind of answer an equation by creating an image or a character and that's kind of the beginning and the end of it and you move on. A bigger situation I feel is the um, not so much creature design but say character design and costume design uh, particularly as it pertains to women in science fiction and games in particular where I have a, a complete distaste for taking women and over sexualizing them or sexualizing them even at all but over sexualizing them in games video games and in films where you have a heroine who always has to be sexy. You know, she can never just be, uh, and whatever average is, but an average woman. She always has to be in something that is sexualized, where the man doesn't have to be. In games in particular, every female character is like a double D breasted, tiny waist. I mean, it, it's a beautiful image iconically, but there are so many other beautiful versions of women that doesn't actually even have to involve sexuality. And the reason it's a problem for me is because it's a very young audience that's living on a staple diet of this. That's their exposure, girls and boys. And I think it's gotta, it's gotta stop or at least be conscious as to why the choices are made because games and, and film oftentimes just go to the cliche partially because you don't have time to create something new that you'd have to explain to the audience the choices. So you have to have those, those quick beats that everyone just gets instantly. That's the bad guy because he's got the black goatee. That's the jock because he's this. You have to work with those cliches. But I think that today's audience, today's market, could benefit from being challenged more about what well, not even what cliches are, but rather uh, what the expectation is. We're talking about a product that needs to um, reimburse its expenses. You know, it needs to make money. And movies are just that. They're just products. They're, they're products sometimes with art, sometimes claiming to have art in them, but they're really just consumer products. And because of that, if you're a producer, you have to come up with things that will sell and sex sells. It's, it's low-hanging fruit. And when I talk to my students about design, I'll, I'll let them do what they want to do and I'll present their work and I'll see these cliches happening. And I'll try and, in my arrogance, elevate them to be more conscious of those choices. And if they don't buy into it and say, well, I just like double D girls in heels with a shotgun, then I'll say, okay, well, that's, that's been done before. So at the very least, it's just not creative. So if you want to be a successful creative designer who's innovative, then you need to come up with ways of creating brand new iconography that's much more compelling. And that's where design matters. We designers in the entertainment field have a responsibility with this privileged vehicle called film and game because it reaches out to so many people. For the most part, I think a lot of designers are given a specific mandate, which they may not have much of a choice to, um, to influence, but I think every designer tends to have an alternative vision to what they've been asked to do. You always have to satisfy what you've been asked to do, but bring in your version at the risk of uh, being told, you know, what the hell are you doing? We only needed this. The risk of it could be that somebody sees a totally different direction that hasn't been anticipated. Hopefully it was a good decision, whatever you made.